autumn in August, day three. Right then, it's been a busy morning this morning, so I'll take you in the kitchen in a minute and tell you what I'm doing in there. And then I've got everything down to show you how I, this is me, I'm, I have been cross-stitching now for, wow, have I really been cross-stitching that long? <laughs> yeah, it'll be 30 years next year. Wow. Okay. <laughs> um... Yeah, so so this is how I start my cross stitches. So I'll show you that right from the scratch on what I do, how I cast on, how I do this. I managed to find a free pattern where I can show you how I what I do with the chart. And anyway, we'll get all to that in a minute because I'm going to take you in the kitchen. Right then, okay. So we're in the kitchen. So as you see, I have um, baked a CD cake this morning. There is. Um, I have done a couple of recipe, a couple of times I've shown how to make that on my channel. Uh, that is the sourdough starter, and I am for the first time making uh, sandwich loaves. This is enough to make two loaves, and it's now at its resting stage. I've done all the stretch. Oops, done all the stretch and fold. It's because it's damp. It's best if you put it. A damp cloth on it and it stops it from drying out especially in this humidity anyway so as you see it's a grubby old thing but that's the one I use every time <laughs> so and these are the tins and the oil ready for the uh, making of it there so that's got a sit and rest now then it will go in the put in the tins then it'll be separated then it'll be separated put in the tins then it'll go to sleep in the fridge overnight and then tomorrow will be baking so hopefully you'll see that Right then, okay, I've done my stretch and fold, my last one, so then I'm going to sit. This is the first time I've actually ever tried sandwich loaves, so it'll be exciting to see if that turns out tomorrow. Well, you'll see that too. <laughs> yeah, oh dear me. Okay then, right, so I'm going to tilt you down and then talk you through what I do. When I was upstairs, I did actually find this book. So Blackbird Designs, so I'm going to sit and look at that. I remember because Teresa and I ordered one that when that came out. <laughs> so yeah, right, I've brought down just a piece of Ada to show you. Obviously I'm not going to start on it and then I've brought over my new one that I am going to start. So I'll show you how I hoop it up and everything. Right then, okay, so let's tilt you down and let's go for it. Let's move you back a bit as well. And tilt you down. Okay, right, as I say, this is a free chart, so I can show this. If you actually go on Hands-On Designs with Kathy, bless her, every year she actually releases, and around Valentine's, she releases a free chart for that she always does for her husband. She's done it for years, and I've got them all. <laughs> I think I've stitched a couple, but it's just nice to have them, and they're just beautiful, and, so, and they are free charts. Right, so let's get my pencil. And I've got a pencil in here somewhere. <laughs> right, so, so the centre one is this one here. So this one here is the one that you start on. That's your first stitch. Then what I would do, let's get my... Oops, sorry. That hit my bars. Um, we want that. We want that. Where is my, oh there you are, there we go. Oh dear me, let's move that over. It's my, not my vase, it's my bowl. Right, okay, let's get a needle. Right, so. I'll just do it on this fair bit, and then I'll show you, because obviously I'm not starting in the centre, am I, of my scarecrow one. And then what I do is, I will get my piece of Ada, and I'll fold it as straight as I can get it, as straight as it is. Because unfortunately not all, all ladies are or all cloths are cut um, on the line, unfortunately. There is some that do and some that don't. <laughs> right then, and then I'll go across there, down there. And I know that here, this little square here, which I will pop the needle in, will be my centre square. There you go. It's 
in the centre. Okay, and that is where I would start my cross stitch if I'm going from the centre out. Right, well obviously with this one I'm doing, I ain't, am I? So, right, that is how you would start if you were. This one I've actually just got the Ada and this, oh, I bought this ages ago. <laughs> and I've got this one to do as well. So, I've got a few already in waiting. <laughs> Upstairs. Right then, okay. Now, the next time I have my overlocker out, I will be overlocking around this piece. Okay, it stops it, the, um, the, the strands from coming out and so on. Okay, so uh, yeah, that is one thing I will definitely be doing. Or if you haven't got an overlocker, you could just zigzag on your sewing machine. Or if you don't have a sewing machine, you can use low tack masking tape to go around to protect the edges and it does it does really help so i will be doing that because i am going to get my overlocker out next week so right but as i say normally i would have gone like that and got my center stitch and put my needle in there now i have been asked if i would show about pooping now I love these Nerge, yep, Nerge hoop. They are the plastic ones. Um, I've got all the sizes in these in the rectangle, and as you see, look, it just fits in there absolutely fine. It's going to be brilliant. And then I also do make grime guards. Right, so then what I would do is, because I, this, this, I, I have a look at my pattern, but I can't show you. <laughs> but this I paid for. So, as I say, Laurie has actually bought lines, so I know where the centre is of that pumpkin. I could, someone did say about using that pumpkin, which I could do, and then pop a couple either side across there. And use that as the centre, or go on top and go across. Mm, what a decision, eh? What a decision. Let's have a look at it. <laughs> right, okay, because the scarecrow on the pattern actually isn't in the centre where mine is going to be. And the actual centre of it is... What one? That one is this one that's actually the actual center is that pumpkin so i could use that not do that and then put two either side and then a couple up up there and then i'll put him here so i am starting at the bottom of this one right so i'm just going to show you how i would hoop so i always lay the cloth down this these hoops I got from Hobby Jobby, I think they're called, when they first hit over here in the UK. But as I say, um, oh, um, Marie's Cross Stitch do them. Um, in fact, I think she's got a, a sale, summer sale on at the moment, but I don't know if the hoops are included, I don't know. Right, and then what I would do is, let's pull that down just a tad. And then, like so. And then I would literally push on because you know you need it a little taut because that's the point of having a hoop. <laughs> Hang on a second. Have I put that the right way around? Because they do seem to have a what's the name? Oh dear. Right. Let's do this. Right, get that like that, and then, and that's the one thing I like about these, is the grip on here is good, where the other, like the wooden ones, you, I have to use a screwdriver, and oh, but this, this does mean, this was actually uh, my dear, dear friend, Susie, from Susie Stitches, I'm sure you all watch her channel, um, <laughs> 
she's the one who got me hooked on these so it's her fault <laughs> bless her i hope she's doing well because as we all know she's not too well at the moment so right so just pull it a little bit like that and i don't like it too tight some people like have it like what they call drum skin tight and i don't quite like that so right then okay so and then i will roll that up like that and then i'll get my grime guard and then every time you know i i need to do a bit i'll just move it up after i've done a section and go like that right so let's pop that on there like so like so tuck all that there and that keeps all the cloth nice and there we go look at that keep it all nice and Right then, so let's make a decision now while I'm doing this. <laughs> oh my gosh. Right, let's take these out of here. And let me show you. I actually start with what they call the loop method. This is the way I have always started with my little scissors. Right, okay, so let's pick something I can start with then, shall we? Let's make a decision. So shall I do the pumpkin here? I think I might put that one in here. So let's look at the colour, 3776. I'm just going to show you how I start. And then oh, that'll be orange, won't it? I'm <laughs> sure with it being a pumpkin anyway right then so what i do is this has already got a piece cut where i've because this is one that i've had before and i don't cut my threads too long i find if you cut them too long they knot up and you end up spending more of the time actually undoing your um uh, your knots so I must admit I don't know what I've used this for because I normally would go a bit longer than that so let's start right from the beginning okay so what I would do is I would go from there to let's lift you up hang on <laughs> so I would go from there to there which is roughly between 12 and 15 inches and then do that double okay then get my little scissors Tank that off and I will, I'll use them on the little bits that I need. Then, right, okay, as you know, it is a six stranded. So, what I do is I get an end, if you tap it, they split. There you go. And then you take one, pull it out, and it just comes out. There we go. So, and then you get the two open ends, what I call the open ends. And there's your loop okay so you get your two ends together pick up your needle I'm going to be using my new little needle threader that I bought the other day because that is good actually so, trouble is is actually seen a thread needle threader. <laughs> I know don't don't just don't <laughs> right then and then you hook it on pull it through Oops, because <laughs> I'm trying not to lick the end of my threads, ain't I? That's the achievement, but we'll see. <laughs> there we go. Right then, and then pull it through, and then you have the two open ends there, and you have the loop at the bottom, okay? Now, I will say, one thing I do do, and I've had this for so many years, I wax my thread. Yeah, I over the years I've bought the um, thread conditioners and all this, that and the other, but I keep going back to my good old wax that we brought, gosh. So Rebecca was still at primary school, I think. And it was at a farmer's market. And then I just run it through once and then that is just enough. You feel, the, feel it on it and it feels lovely. Right then, so let's put you down and then let me show you how I start. <laughs> let's put that pattern there so you don't see it. Let's put you back down again. 
Now, as you know, I would normally have um, my stand, hang on, you need to be up a bit. Is that better? Yeah, I would normally have my stand, but you know, you wouldn't be able to see me as much. So let's start, because I want it to go round there. So I'm using that as that. So what I would do to start is, let's have a look. So let's use this one. That sound, that looks good. Oh, I'll go here actually. Hmm, here, I don't know where to start. <laughs> do I want, I don't really want to go on to that, do I? So if I go, um, here, okay, yeah, I know what I'm doing now. Right, so I would, right, come up. So I'm going to see if I can zoom in for you. Pull it up and then like do half a cross. Then I flip it over. Put my needle through the loop at the end. So let me get that there, see? Like so, and then pull it. And it's cast on, it's nice and neat. And so this is the method I've always used. Myself, <laughs> I am a half cross stitch girl first and then go back. A lot of people, like my friend Teresa for instance, she does a cross at a time, some do. Um, but some, you know what I mean, are like me, and they actually do half a cross stitch at a time. So then you'll go, well, I'll do, I'll just do a bit, and then if I have to unpick it, I have to unpick it. And then you do half a cross stitch, and then do as many as the pattern says, and then just go back and do the other half. That is cross stitch. Basically, it is that simple. And it is what they call, used to call, I don't know if they still do, but they used to call it counter cross stitch because basically you're counting the little squares on the chart, aren't you? So, but this is like hundreds of years old. So it is a form of embroidery. I am an Ada stitcher. I have tried all the others, don't like them, but I love Ada. And I believe in, you know, you, you use what you, you find is best for yourself. I've tried stitching in hand. I, my stitches are not as neat for some reason, I don't know. So I do like a hoop. I've, you know, I started off in a hoop. I started cross-stitching when I was in Canada. But saying that, I don't know if anybody else would remember, but at my primary school, cool, when I was about, well, I would have been about five, six, uh, you used to, you, they used to give you a piece of binker. Do you remember binker? And then you used to do little stitches all on it, make your own bookmark. I remember doing that. So, yeah, you know what I mean? So, but yeah, it's basically it. So what I'm going to be doing with this pattern, as you all know, is I'm starting at the bottom, as I say, because normally I would start in the middle. If, if my Ada was right, I'd start in the middle and work my way out, because that's the way I like working. But I'm starting at the bottom because I'm fitting the elements on all in different places. <laughs> I know, I know, I do I do this for myself. And um, yeah, so this will actually fit on my Ada. You know, you can do that, you know, it's not as strict. <laughs> I remember years ago, gosh, years ago, when you used to get, a, you know, your, your Ada and your, your chart and your threads and stuff. I've never really been a kit person. And, you know, you, you'd do it to the T. You would follow that chart to the T and that had back stitches and fractional stitches and all this that and the other some of them still do most of them don't luckily these days and yeah and then all of a sudden it, the world of cross stitch just changed overnight it was brilliant and you know that the that you know you could like like the one I've just done actually I've, I've got upstairs I'll have to show you the um boo something it's called isn't it Pumpkin boot, no, not pumpkin boot, what's it called? Something. Anyway, um, which I finished, and it's, you know, I used all my own colours, and it's not as strict as they say, you know, would that make you feel as if it's strict as it used to be? Right then, okay, so I'm going to disappear for today. I'm going to edit this and cut things out and put things, you know, change things around. And, um, yeah, I might take these stitches out and see about... Um, what I'm actually going to do here, because I don't know whether to do that or not. I, I might put the row of pumpkins across the bottom. 
still and then go up anyway you'll see as the progress goes on won't you but that is literally how i start a cross stitch but when it comes to casting off actually i will just show you that just in case there is any newbies out there <laughs> to cast off because you have your little stitches at the back here you just push your needle underneath pull it through snip it off and then it's cast off basically if let's just say you're not you use a thread like where's that bit i just had here we go has this got a loop on it or not oh i don't know if it will it hasn't hang on right okay so say if you're starting a, a piece of thread that you've already used before and your loop isn't there that's fine just go underneath these here normally go under about three like so and then the first one I will do again oh gosh do you know what? that never happens it's typical isn't it? <laughs> so go underneath like that because I didn't catch the first one that's what it was there you go it's caught there there you go and it's caught it's started it's neat you can't see it at the back is not much it's safe cast off you just drag your, your stitches underneath the um, loops and that's how you do it okay then right so and i'll be back tomorrow see you later